A warm welcome to everyone, and I welcome on behalf of Faculty of Dentistry, myself, Dr. Shulagna Datta, Head of Services Research in Faculty of Dentistry, Massa University. We have uh, arranged for another webinar, and this time it's also going to be a very essential one. So what is it about? This is about artificial intelligence and use of artificial intelligence in surgery. Now, surgeons create partnerships with scientists and engineers to capture, process, classify data across each phase of care to provide useful clinical context. Our faculty of dentistry have always joined hands with scientists and engineers to be more productive to be more in terms of Massa University logo. So artificial intelligence has the potential to transform the way surgery is taught and practiced nowadays. And it presents great career scope for future clinicians, engineers, and scientists. So students and colleagues, please join me in welcoming our speaker for today, who is an accomplished engineer and scientist, Professor Dr. Abdul Rahim Sadiq Bacha, who is uh, a faculty in our engineering and built environment in Massa University. He obtained his PhD from Multimedia University, Malaysia. He received Masters of Engineering in Power Electronics and Drives Engineering from Bharat Darshan University in India and Bachelor of Engineering degree in Electronics and Communication uh, from Madurai Kamaraj University in India. He has over 30 years of tertiary teaching experiences for engineering, masters, as well as bachelor's programs in the field of electronic and communication engineering. He has supervised several postgraduate and research projects in mobile communication and computer systems engineering, as well as undergraduate student projects. He served as an adjunct lecturer for various tertiary institutions as well. He has held various administrative positions, such as postgraduate coordinator for franchise collaborative programs with University of East London, external examiner for Leeds Bankage University in UK. Dr. Sadiq is a chartered engineer awarded from Engineering Council UK, a consultant and registered graduate engineer of the Board of Engineers in Malaysia. As a chartered engineer, he develops solutions to, in, uh, to electronic and uh, any electrical engineering problems using novel technologies through innovation and definitely through his own creativity. He is a certified train the trainer and can provide training, research clinics and webinars on research methodology, outcome-based education, artificial intelligence, and electrical vehicles. He has served as a keynote speaker, reviewer for various peer reviewed journals and chairman in international conference. So it is our honor to welcome Dr. Sadiq to the podium. Welcome Dr. Sadiq, the stage is yours. Thank you uh, for your nice introduction, Dr. Sulagna. Um, Assalamu alaikum and good evening to everyone participating this uh, webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Prof. Rosna, Dean of Faculty of Dentistry, uh, Dr. Iman, Faculty of Engineering and Built Environment, Dr. Sulagna, Head of Services and Research from Dentistry, and uh, Ms. Uh, Jennifer Fernandez from Makum for their support to organize this seminar. Uh, I would like to welcome all the participants uh, for this uh, webinar. So I think this session will be useful for all the physicians and then uh, uh, those who are practicing the uh, practicing students and all. Uh, so today's topic is artificial intelligence assistance in surgical robotics. As uh, during the introduction, um, Dr. Sulagna has uh, mentioned about the importance of uh, uh, surgical robotics and artificial intelligence. Uh, today my webinar covers <coughs> Uh, 
uh, the following areas introduction to ai and machine learning deep learning uh, neural network and challenges and neural network modeling artificial intelligence and surgical robots dentronics and finally i'll give the conclusion of this okay uh, every human uh, have uh, his own intelligence it's a inborn nature so the term uh, artificial intelligence refers uh, the simulation of human intelligence in machines machines means computer to think and mimic like humans so human have the capacity of uh, learning reasoning and perceptions so in artificial intelligence through artificial intelligence we can achieve the goal of learning reasoning and perception of a human being so how is, is it possible actually basically ai is an algorithm so that enable machine to mimic to demonstrate like uh, the human cognition behavior so this is uh, we can say artificial intelligence the definition there are many definitions this is the simplest definition for ai <clears throat> so every industry is now moving towards a digital transformation so as a result ai is also moving towards uh, in uh, industries various industries especially medical industries uh, so basically uh, we have uh, create new solutions for this ai according to the applications so what is the purpose because the purpose is uh, they improve the quality and reduce the waste because uh, the ai can perform like a human being and uh, sometimes you know the human being have some basic uh, laziness and other things but this will this is a machine oriented program so that it has uh, no uh, some characteristics like uh, it doesn't have some characteristics like human our nature okay what are the possible applications plenty of applications of ai in our day to day life for example uh, machine translation i mean the translation of your google translation and all comes under this a every day you are using a in your day to day life without knowing that you are using ai so internet of things and inter industrial 4.0 these are the future uh, i mean era and then robotics and soft these are the various uh, possible applications of uh, artificial intelligence so for example it is used in uh, e-commerce space and uh, for example uh, there uh, deep mind alpha go Uh, there is a chess competitions it outperforms a man's uh, the uh, lee santol uh, with uh, less time it is a history this google's uh, this is a innovation of google and then your netflix and uh, industry i mean uh, as per the i mean applications uh, the major applications are nowadays uh, a is moving towards medical industry so for example the uh, diagnosis and uh, preventive maintenance and predictions all we can use a because plenty of algorithms have been developed already for a instance uh, the pathologist the breast cancer diagnosis i think it's uh, the when you compare this uh, table uh, uh, it's almost uh, equivalent to the uh, physician's uh, decisions the decision made by uh, a algorithm so in future uh, probably it outperforms perform than human being decision making capability so in medical industries it can uh, do perform delicate operations more precisely and efficiently not only this uh, pre operative decision making candidate selection every aspects uh, in uh, ai can dominate uh, in medical industries and moreover for the drug analysis drug uh, discovery new Uh, i mean combinations all we can use a so machine learning machine learning is a part of a it's a subset of a what is a is a very general word inside a we have a uh, various types of algorithms so machine le learning is one of the algorithms so through this algorithms we can train and uh, improve the model machine learning model a model uh, from that it can act without any human intervention meaning to say that it use uh, statistical method to enable the machines to improve with experience so based on the data available see this diagram in this diagram 
I have given uh, the first, we, because normally in any program, normal program, uh, coding, uh, we write the coding and then we give the input. Whereas in a machine learning algorithm, we have to train a model. How? By giving an input data. Data is the first phase of uh, developing a machine learning model. We have to create data. You see here, there is a scooter and a car. The features of this uh, scooter and car are extracted as a data. And then based on the data, we have to train the model. Later, I will explain what is model and all. This uh, Just your understanding the process, I will explain the process. Once you train the data uh, model from the data, the algorithm is capable of taking, uh, making decision making. And we need to test that the our efficiency of our model so that we have to test the model after that we have to implement based on the inference so this is the process of machine um, i mean the flow chart of machine learning process so there are uh, various uh, i mean uh, descriptions and then uh, the main one is the decision tree this is one of the aspect and support vector machine k means cl clustering basically this A is uh, nothing, uh, it's uh, involved mathematical mathematics, especially uh, algebra, vector, all these uh, statistics all involved in this machine learning algorithms. So the algorithms has to be developed with the help of uh, mathematical uh, formulas. Okay, for example, uh, uh, I will give an example uh, uh, how the numerical, uh, how it will do the prediction. Because uh, we see uh, in this uh, equations, uh, we have W0, W1, X1, X2, X3, Xn. These are all the different variables, X1, X2, Xn. For example, if you want to predict the house price, you need to give the size of the house, how many rooms, where is the locations. All are assigned as variables. X1 is a house uh, area. X2 is the, uh, I mean, uh, price. And X3 is the locations, X4 is the number of uh, rooms, all these things. And weights, uh, these are weights and uh, weights is the uh, added qu I mean, uh, quantity with the variable so that it will give an outcome to predict the house. After, uh, during the next uh, few, uh, future slides, uh, you can see how it works. So now I give an example uh, that prediction because uh, machine learning algorithm used for prediction as well as classification. Okay, these are the two main tasks. And support, a support vector machine is a, a machine learning algorithm used for classification problem. What is mean by classification problem? You have, uh, you want to identify pizza. You want to identify pizza from different varieties of foods. So this is, a, this comes under classification problem. Uh, in your medical term, uh, uh, based on the classification problem, the uh, cancer, uh, breast cancer and all uh, is uh, fall under this classification problem. Okay. So because first we need you to identify what is our, our uh, task is under which sector, whether it is a prediction model or we can develop a classification model. So that's why uh, we are introducing these uh, two main algorithms. So in this... Uh, uh, machine learning algorithm uh, uh, for classification problem, we are using a support vector machine algorithm. So these are all standard algorithms. Uh, scientists can under understand or engineers can understand these algorithms. So uh, scientists or engineer can get the data from the physician or surgeon based on the data, based on their outcome, the surgeon can develop the, uh, identify the problem, whether it comes under classification problem or it comes under prediction problem. Okay, so now uh, there are many types of machine learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforced learning. What is mean by supervised learning? So the main important aspect of uh, A is data. Data is the primary component in this uh, to develop a uh, ML or A uh, model. So without data, you can't develop. So first of all, the data, based on the data, we can classify supervised learning and unsupervised learning. For supervised learning, we use 
support vector machines and uh, decision tree algorithm for uh, unsupervised learning we can use k-mean a priori so supervised learning means every data we need to lab label for example you have a cluster of pizza donut and everything eh? so we need to write the name for the data identify the data under different labels so that we can it, it comes under supervised learning sometimes eh, there is no uh, there are few programs using k mean a priori uh, we use unlabeled data so that that uh, comes under unsupervised learning so these are all just like a uh, classifications uh, based on the type of data so i want to insist yeah, the uh, reinforced learning is a uh, learn to make decision through the reward by trial and error method so the algorithm is markum a decision tree okay so the what i'm trying to say here is first of all you need to understand data is more important based on the data we have to classify which type of machine learning and which type of uh, algorithm we have to use and also the uh, i mean uh, two types regression model or classification model regression model used for prediction uh, predicting the house price based on the data whereas the classifications uh, uh, pictures uh, and the audio all comes under a classification model if the your data is a picture data you can uh, go into classify develop the classification model if your uh, data is uh, numbers or prices or anything the uh, parameters uh, uh, numerical parameters then you go for the regression model okay the example classification learn to identify pizza so here uh, i label in the first diagram i label pizza and donut second i didn't label it is the first one is uh, used for uh, supervised learning because i the data is labeled second one uh, it's cluster right mixed so that it comes under and supervised learning because there is no labeling for donut and pizza the third one is the reinforcement because uh, one donut and one pizza is uh, identified so what is the purpose so what i have to do when you develop a model i have to create a, a data set in the data set variety of donuts and pizzas with label so then i have to go for supervised learning machine learning algorithm so and supervised machine learning algorithm i have to use uh, support vector machines because uh, this is and uh, this pizza identification of pizza comes under classification model so that i have to use support vector machine algorithm to identify so what i do i have to create a i mean the data engineer i mean the ai engineer can create a pool of data with data sets with uh, label so and he has to write the algorithm and use this data to train the algorithm to train the model to train the model model means it's a mathematical form and uh, codings okay so we have to give the input as the data is our input based on the data we need to do go for training the algorithm so once you create a model you have to train the algorithm after that uh, you have to add, uh, get and conclusions whether your model is ready to implement how you have to test the model uh, for a training point of view Uh, development of model testing for going for before going for the real time implementation we have to use the model test the model and then we have to use for our real time so after developing this uh, using this machine learning uh, so the model can predict uh, whether the item is a pizza or donut how based on the images okay so in google uh, you are using this is some examples i am giving uh, uh, because uh, how you are using everyday machine learning algorithm in uh, your day to day life in google uh, all this application you we all using these are all the part of machine learning and then uh, for the translation google photos everything uh, comes under machine learning applications your map google map wall okay so facebook in facebook you are using Uh, analysis of facial recognition uh, friend recommendation all these things this is a general applications okay now uh, i introduce about the machine learning another one the next one is uh, deep learning 
it is a subset of machine learning what is the difference between uh, machine learning and deep learning a uh, deep learning is the structured neural network algorithm so if your data is huge data like uh, images and soundtracks because uh, if you take one image uh, it has lot of pixels if you take one picture of a person uh, it has lot of pixels all comes under data different data with the different points so when you uh, have a image uh, or a soundtracks for classification problem uh, your data set will be millions of data sets so you cannot do with the machine learning you have to go further go for deep learning algorithm so deep learning also subset of machine learning deep learning is a subset of machine learning what is the difference here uh, we have uh, previously the data as uh, the feature extraction is manual here uh, feature learning and classifier all comes under the your uh, equation i mean your uh, model so you give the input and feature learning and classifier all falls under this uh, your model and then finally you will get the output so deep learning is the, that's why in uh, nowadays you are talking about neural networks neural networks actually this neural networks become uh, nowadays popular uh, because in the, because uh, now the data sets are higher every day for example uh, if you uh, send one whatsapp to others or if you send one picture to others uh, or if you see something from the facebook uh, behind the screen uh, huge amount of da data uh, transfers and data manipulations all happen okay so it it will automatically take the decision and you uh, when you search something you will get the results so behind that a lot of data so huge amount of data so massive amount of data when you use you go for deep learning uh, why neural networks become popular nowadays uh, those days uh, the advancement of uh, processor is limited uh, limited i think uh, uh, in the last few decades before uh, you have uh, your memory capacity is uh, very less you don't have any graphic uh, processor nowadays uh, you are advanced laptop uh, with due to the fpga processing and all uh, uh, you have uh, advanced processor very high speed processors as well as your graphical processors so that's why uh, nowadays uh, these neural networks become popular because it handles massive amount of data so inside your mobile phone uh, you have a uh, high end processors and uh, uh, graphical networks all uh, so that uh, your uh, uh, the neural networks algorithm works so it will solve complex problems deep learning solves complex problems basically text images and soundtracks so uh, i emphasize here machine learning handles lesser amount if you have a lesser amount of data set you use machine learning if you have a massive data you go for uh, deep learning algorithm okay neural networks because neural networks is part of the deep learning so i need to explain what is deep learning actually in neur uh, is neuron in your human brain works has a neurons okay so similar concepts were so applied here uh, so basically here we have input layer hidden layer and output layer so the first layer of your neural networks is input layer in the input layer it you have to load an input raw data for to produce an uh, output to predict for the prediction because i already mentioned you have a lot of data these data will be given to your input layer second one uh, hidden layer all the mathematical computations operations are performed in the hidden layer based on the data given and then in the given hidden layer once you give the data input data to the hidden layer we need to train the model model automatically training process will be going on and we get the prediction from the network out from the output layer don't think that layer layer means it's not like a layer in the coding we have a right coding for input layer to configure input layer to configure hidden layer to configure so it's a coding path only so layer means don't think that it is a layer it is a coding path so every in your coding you have to you specify input uh, uh, layer coding different types of coding and hidden layer different types of coding and output layer we have different types of coding based on that coding uh, the model will work so data will be given from you based on from the data set okay 
so how you have to train your model actually here the variables are x1 x2 x x3 x4 for example uh, you have your height weight or something like that so each variable you have to give as a input to the uh, new, i mean uh, neural network input to your program so what happen uh, sometimes you know when you uh, this uh, uh, parameters will transfer from one layer to another layer by that time you are adding some coefficient uh, to the input signal this is a mathematical uh, process so you based on the coefficient uh, you have to give the weights weights is actually like a parameter like 0.5 yam or something like that and biases value added to ensure the nodes are activated so weights and bias are important aspects of so every node we need to give weights and uh, bias so that what you have what happened the process see the process uh, starting from input uh, data will be taken weights will be added bias will be added it will go to the next layer again weight another weight will be added and bias will be added and it will go to the next layer so that it will transfer from every layer it is forward directions again it will come to the reverse directions so that uh, how the for a, this is called a training process this is we can call it as training process okay so we are adding the weights and bias so that the training process uh, will going on see here uh, input layer i1 i2 i3 output layer h1 h2 uh, i mean uh, q1 q2 o1 o2 o3 and in between you have the hidden layer so between the layers uh, you are uh, uh, input parameters will be added with bias and weights okay so this is uh, this is a uh, purpose of calculating the mathematical value functions so that uh, now uh, we are adding the transform activation functions you see here x1 x2 x3 uh, we transform the inputs by adding weights and biases okay the transformed input will be connected to the next node and then we have to add some functions linearity functions so what is the main purpose main purpose is when you train the model finally you have to get the minimum error you have to get the minimum error so based on that you have to find the efficiency of your model so that uh, you need to in your coding you need to add all these functions input bias uh, weight and activation functions okay there are uh, many activation functions actually you are uh, adding the activation functions in your uh, hidden layer so it is a mathematical one relu and leaky relu i mean a linear um, a real linear unit and tan h sigmoid all mathematical functions you have to implement in your hidden layer so this is part of the programming activity okay then uh, output layer actually i mentioned that uh, you need to identify there are two types of classifications one is binary classifications and binary multi class classifications for example uh, uh, i already mentioned machine learning model two types one is prediction model or regression model and another one is classification model in classification model we are using uh, sigmoid as a output layer activation function if the softmax also one of the function these are the mathematical functions we need to add to develop our model okay now uh, cost loss function what is the use of this cost loss function uh? this cost loss function uh, measures how good your neural network uh, with respect to training your data and your expected output for example uh, this uh, there are many classification cost functions classification for classification you are using cross entropy function or multi class uh, cross entropy negative lived likelihood so these are all the various types of cross and loss function uh, cost functions you are going to use okay so if you have a regression you have mean square error loss mean absolute loss so based on the model for example you are developing a uh, finding the cancers uh, in um, identification of cancers or diagnosis of cancers uh, it comes under classification if you have a, if you want a classification model you have to use your cost and loss function as uh, this uh, cross entropy binary or multi class within this five so what is the use this you can implement this functions 
you can implement in your coding or in your algorithm so once uh, this cost function is uh, added uh, when you train your model uh, you will get the uh, output uh, that based on the measurement of the cost function output uh, uh, you have to uh, find the efficiency because if your cost function is minimum uh, means uh, because uh, this process is iterative process this training process is a iterative process if your cost function is minimum what happen the model will be ready to for testing because maximum cost function uh, because it's not a good uh, i mean model so you have to use this uh, functions cost functions in your algorithm once you uh, apply this one and once you train your model then based on the measure of the cost function you have to uh, identify whether it's this model is fit for implementation first second thing okay this is the one i'm saying what is the training process because in each node bias and uh, weights are added it will go to the forward and backward movement so what happened due to the iteration until you get the minimum error okay the error should be minimum then your model will be best model okay so what is the coding we are using in java java dl and python also one more code uh, java uh, deep learning for j is the code for java base skill for building training and deploying a neural network so your bias your functions your uh, uh, weights and your activation function and all these things you can implement in this coding algorithm using either using a java code or using a python code i stress here neural network is a a coding actually it's a coding that will implement the input layer of function output uh, hidden layer function and output layer function so once uh, this coding is uh, done uh, you have to take a uh, testing the model how for example uh, uh, data sets you have 100 datas 80% of the data use it for training and 20% for testing for example when you um, train your students uh, first you give some examples 10 or 15 or 20 examples or 100 examples uh, from that you have to test something then uh, if you uh, the answer is correct your students is best student based on that uh, training to make the model to understand what is the data how to make decisions and all based on the training we are trained the model to take decisions but the testing the real data will be given 20% of the data will be given for testing once testing is over we will apply implement in real time model so basically i summarize my points again machine learning and deep learning or an algorithm to develop an algorithm that will uh, mimic like a human being to take a decision making a learning and a perception and decision making so that what we do uh, we need data is the main important thing for this uh, i mean uh, uh, modeling uh, because without data uh, you can't develop ai because if you develop ai means you need a data a later part i will explain how okay now uh, nowadays uh, artificial intelligence penetrate in all the uh, i mean um, industries especially in medical industries uh, uh, in surgery because today our topic is in surgery so it will assist uh, surgeons uh, for the uh, because the robo and then the a combined together and then uh, it will assist the surgeons so many researchers are going on for a enabled surgical robots okay so now uh, we have to talk about what is a robot and robotics and we have to talk about already we have discussed about the artificial intelligence now we are going to talk about surgical robots and then we have to integrate both to make a surgical robot okay surgical procedures uh, we all as a, a dent i mean the um, uh, physician you all know that uh, the uh, signals uh, surgical procedures are very complicated okay for example in terms of uh, precision uh, control and uh, during surgeries okay so and then uh, 
uh, because we can call it as the motor skills. Uh, so loss of motor skills will happen during surgery. So these are the challenges in surgery. So in order to avoid that, slowly we got the advancement of um, electronics and mechatronics, uh, robotics play an important role in surgery. Okay, so what is a surgical robot? It's a computer control design device designed to assist with the manipulation and positioning of instruments. Okay, basically uh, it is a norm. This is a humanoid actually, because there are many types of uh, robots. If you have arms, uh, six axis axial arms, it's also considered as a robot. If you fix with the uh, camera sensor, then vision, computer vision comes in place. If you have a audio facility and then mic and all the, then it comes under natural language processing. So we have to integrate computer vision, mechatronics, NLP all together to make a, a humanoid uh, used in surgery. Okay, so basically this uh, surgery, surgical robots, uh, I mean, uh, control of speed and movement, uh, minimizing the hand tremors and avoid accidental hand movements. This can be avoided when you use a proper recommended and uh, robo, I mean, access, I mean, robotic robots. So what are the applications of surgical robots, hair transplant procedures, surgery, kidney surgery, cardiovascular uh, treatment, abdominal surgery, and dentronics. Okay, now, what is the AA-assisted robots? Because uh, robo is an arm that will play in a during the surgery so we have to a robot means uh, no we, without AI, if the surgical robots uh, there is a human intervention is needed meaning to say that surgeon has to give instructions he can see the uh, camera or uh, and he can see the display and he can change the positions and he has to do the surgery so without human assistance we have to if you employ artificial intelligence uh, I mean, a model in these robots, surgical robots, then it is called A enabled surgical robots, meaning to say that minimal, uh, I mean, some, uh, I mean, uh, involvement of surgeons in the surgery, meaning to say the A will take decision according to the given data so that A and robotics play an important role in next generation surgeries okay so basically the surgical robots trajectory depth speed uh, with the great precision uh, precision this is the this all uh, as, uh, physicians all know very well this but uh, the surgical sometimes you know before you go for the surgical procedures you have to take the data and then uh, you have to analyze using the uh, a model to come for a decision and then this is for pre-operation. For the surgical time, uh, the A itself take decisions based on the data. So how? Because we need to give a uh, plenty of data to train the A model. So let my later slide will explain clearly about how to train it. Okay, learning and training. Okay, learning from demonstration, training the robots to conduct new tasks based on the accumulated informations. The information may be from the, your surgeons, uh, clinical uh, insights, and then your video, and all these things. So what we do, we have to split the surgical task into several uh, subtasks and basic gestures. Then the robots can recognize, model, and conduct the subtasks in a sequential mode. So that uh, every aspect we need to develop, um, uh, I mean, algorithm, so we need millions of data sets to do so this data sets already know uh, the based on the discussion with because uh, when you do this uh, a application uh, in a robotic uh, surgical robotics uh, the collaboration between the engineer and surgeon is very very important because why uh, surgeon have uh, no no about the knowledge of uh, data and what is the outcome expected outcome and all uh, the engineer, he can, based on the data, given data, he can develop the A model. So a col good collaboration is very, very important when you apply A in surgical robots. 
because uh, without human in, uh, intervention uh, the species i mean the egg can perform but if you want a uh, surgeons you no need to ai uh, the surgeon can control the robots so that's obviously nowadays uh, taking place in certain areas so machine learning what is the i already mentioned about machine learning okay so risk assessments performance evolu uh, evolution uh, treatment decision making and outcome predictions this is uh, this we can uh, develop a model for this applications in surgery and uh, individual management and surgical planning to each this is a pre uh, surgical procedures here also we can use a model uh, for the management and surgical planning of each patients and then uh, anatomical way because each patient has different anatomy so anatomical variations uh, they can extract the uh, data and, ex um, and uh, extract the reconstruction of spinal anatomy this is for spinal surgery i just uh, give an example okay machine learning algorithms okay it facilitates surgical candidate selection and uh, in autonomous surgeries the ml used for camera position tissue uh, dissection suturing and knot tying these are all the possible areas we mean to say that in order to think the robo independently and act independently we have to develop a machine learning model and we have to integrate with the robot robot without uh, with the human uh, uh, with the surgeon's intervention uh, he can give the data but without surgeon he can take the position of surgeon and make the robot to see and think and act according to the uh, to complete the, the task autonomously this is the uh, application of a in Uh, surgical robotics i think this slide will uh, make a clear understanding of a application in surgical uh, robots so basically for camera positioning because in um, laparoscopic on some surgery you need to give exact positioning but uh, with with surgical with the human i mean intervention uh, the physician or a surgeon can position based on the uh, screen but if you apply a automatically the algorithm can think and it can position based on the uh, i mean uh, task i mean outcome so tissue dissection suturing knot tying all done by the a uh, enabled surgical robots so no need surgeon in this case but uh, it is in early stage actually the autonomous surgeries are in the early st early stages research are going because there are certain limitations we later we will discuss okay these are all the ml in surgery uh, so available today no automation passive assistance and uh, partial automation and conditional automation under research and ethical issues exist because if you go for high automation full automation with ai you need to face uh, go for the uh, ethical issues so this is one of the uh, i mean uh, obstacles or challenges uh, to fully apply in a a in uh, surgical procedures because we are dealing with human beings lives so uh, very very careful so that's why these are all the uh, things uh, issues now exists for implementing a enabled surgical robots okay so i mentioned that uh, uh data sets data because data sets is very very important so uh because for other applications uh, the data sets are available google alex data set there are various data sets are available if any engineer want to develop for other application for agriculture application or business applications they they have huge amount of data but in uh, medical field uh, especially in surgery uh, the data set generation is uh, very very uh, difficult challenge is a challenging one because why uh, for example uh, data set uh, captures for the da vinci surgical system so it is uh, from eight surgeons with different levels of uh, skill performing five repetition of three elementary surgical tasks on a bench top model meaning to say that from various surgeons from with various skills and repetitions we have to collect the data so how to collect the data 
by measurement and simulation of original problem for example there is one uh, jigsaw data sets available so it has uh, for the control of the arm axis robotic axis instrument kinetic kinetic data uh, position cartesian position orientation velocities angular velocities all these things and apart from that video data stereo video data from endoscopy all these data can be used as the, as the data set for train the model because you are uh, training a robo to perform like a surgeon so sir there are various aspects very complex data needed to train okay so that only you have to go for a successful surgery so these are just uh, the jigsaw data sets consists of this this jigsaw data sets is already available for research purpose okay Uh, now most of this uh, program is uh, for um, dental basically uh, organized by dental so i have given some exam i will give some example for dentronics so what is dentronics it's a modern dental technology such as robo a hardware software and machine learning all we can implement in this so it describes assistive diagnostic predictive and invasive Uh, human centered technological tools in dentistry so we can increase the accuracy and efficiency so this term refers this and, and application of surgical robots in dentistry maxillofacial surgery so em yomi it is an uh, invasive robotic assistant dental implantology by neosis incorporated me uh, usa it's permitted uh, by the food and drug administrations they have permitted based on the data from the ct the dentist plan the positions uh, during the surgery the robot arm drills and hold the jaw bone and places the implement but in china uh, the uh, robot implanted two implants in a uh, human fully autonomously observed by a dentist who did not intervene in the process uh, it was appeared in a china morning post in 2017 and robotic education simroid it's a humanoid for a full body patient simulation system hanako is a, its height is 165 mm it uh, comes with a skeletal and mineral chloride based gum pattern of skin uh, it Im imitates uh, human accents like uh, uh, express pain roll eyes blink shake all this human uh, i mean just as so it can simulate and vomiting also so this is a research done by rakesh bo h o k o so a and uh, robots in future dentistry uh, human so far human interaction and uh, if you go for the big data if you have a pool of data if you create and in future you have to go for uh, the state of uh, the art robots which is uh, a enabled um, surgical robots in dentistry okay so aml and al have uh, because it's uh, the data driven analysis and algorithm based of machine learning actually currently uh, it's not intended to replace the dentist but rather to create a uh, informed opinion based on the mathematical decisions uh, so does it mean that you know we are replacing the dentist and uh, Uh, only few applications made into reality with the uh, pilot case studies only use cases only not in real okay so in jigsaw we have a video data to classify surgical task predict expertise and performance this is the data set it covers the video data and then uh, this data has to be given to train your model okay so uh, data is very very important without data that's why uh, some of the surgical robot uh, surgical robots are in the premature stage due to the inavailability of data okay these are the examples uh, some examples for uh, different papers and the research and um, done the research differential renal cell uh, from uh, benign renal tissues these are the applications areas uh, and then the mathematical models uh, logistics regression computer vision read these are the different types of machine learning algorithms 
so training input the first one spectrum another one videos videos so in uh, medical uh, video data are more important okay what are the challenges and limitations data availability i already mentioned high volume of surgical data is needed for uh, to ensure the safetyness and then um, we need to keep a, a patient informations without violating the patient's privacy regulations and uh, still the closest collaboration between surgeons and engineers is required okay so because uh, surgeon also need uh, some ideas on uh, aa and then uh, engineers also have they need to have a idea of medical uh, terminology and medical data and then the outcomes so it is very very uh, important uh, challenge because uh, for developing a um, machine learning or ia model for a, a medical field uh, especially in surgery is not a easy thing and it has it's a very sensitive area so that uh, this is a, the, the one of the challenges so now uh, actually once you train the model we have to go for the demonstration by trial and error method okay so it is interdisciplinary collaboration so these are the main challenges uh, the main is a uh, data because you know uh, data uh, we need uh, more data but uh, still certain uh, because you know the engineer you know he doesn't know what is the real data he needed for developing the algorithms because if one of the data is missing uh, everything will be collapsed so it is a very very complicated process to develop the algorithm using the available data okay so now big data what is big data big data is a few massive data so that's why nowadays you all see big data big data is nothing is a huge amount of data so why you need for the safety and quality of the surgery so there are multiple studies have utilized for machine learning and predictive machine learning models have been used to guide surgical patient selections okay so now uh, we need a approach for surgical machine learning as well as surgical robots and we have to hybrid of these two approaches to go for the uh, a enabled surgical robots still it is in the i mean research areas or research many, many research is going on and use cases are done but uh, real time uh, soon uh, will be possible in all areas okay these are the reference okay since it is a covid time stay safe and follow the uh, i mean sops thank you thank you very much dr sadik uh, really i mean uh, thank you so much to make the concept of uh, artificial intelligence in surgical robotics so simple and easy to understand for everyone and uh, it is also clear that clinical implications of the artificial intelligence arise from the aim of assistance right and not replacement of surgical expertise so we uh, want the collaboration of clinicians researchers and uh, engineers to come up with this okay we again thank our speaker and uh, we are pleased to announce that on monday that is that is 28 february at 3:30 pm again faculty of dentistry is coming up with another distinguished lecture on robotics in head and neck surgery by ms nazim ghazali from the uh, royal blackburn hospital uk so till then stay well and stay curious on robotic surgery goodbye thank you dr sadik once more thank you thank you very much thanks thank you